In this video, I will be going over how to replace the ignition coil on a newer Ryobi 25cc trimmer. Start by removing the T30 bolt holding on the drive shaft along with the T20 retaining screw because you will need to remove the engine clutch cover to gain access to the ignition coil. Next step, loosen the two T20 Torx holding on the carburetor and airbox assembly. This is so you can maneuver it to easily unplug the engine stop wires as shown here. Once everything is loose, pull apart the two connectors and polarity does not matter. It does not matter how you plug them back up or how you take them loose. They're weather tight connectors and they pull apart just like that. Now completely remove the airbox assembly and lift up the carburetor to unhook your throttle cable. Next, depress the retaining clips with a pair of uh, needle nose pliers as shown here and pop it loose and move it out of the way. And what I like to do is put the air box loosely back on the carburetor. That way the carburetor isn't just falling off and, you know, getting in the way. You just turn them a couple threads and there you go. So we're ready to move on to the next step, which is removing the clutch cover. By removing the recoil assembly with all T20 Torx, you have two plastic thread screws on the top, labeled one and two, and then you have two additional metal thread screws at the bottom, labeled three and four on this diagram. Remove all four screws as shown here, either with a uh, power tool or hand tool, personal preference. Here are the locations for the four screws holding on the clutch cover. Now this is where it can get tricky because once you remove these four T20 screws, both the rear recoil cover and the front clutch cover will come off. There is no need to remove the gas tank and this is a diagram of where the four fasteners are located. Remove all four fasteners as mentioned either with a power tool or hand tool which is personal preference to you. And there's our coil. So let's get on to replacing the coil. You will need a T20 and here's how you do it. You're going to pull this wire out. There's a piece of heat shrink on there and it fits in a groove over the uh, plastic baffle. And pay attention to how your wires and your spacers are. Now orientation really doesn't matter, but you're going to remove that old coil and uh, be careful on this side. It can be a little tricky getting it loose. And once your old coil is off, you're ready to put in your new coil. See there's all the uh, spacers and stuff. They will tend to fall and get stuck to the magnet on the flywheel. So yeah, so let's get this done and the new coil on and put it back together. Alright, so the coil is on and we're setting the uh, clearance at 10 thousandths. I'm using a, a long feeler gauge. It's way too long for this engine, but I couldn't find my small one. So we're going to set it to 10 thousandths. I had tightened up the coil to keep the retainers in place. So we're going to loosen it and it's going to suck it down towards the magnet. And we're right at a 10 thousandths air gap. We tighten it up and everything and we're good to go. So now we're going to put everything back together. We're going to put the recoil back on first. This is a very important step. So we're going to put the two metal thread screws on first and you're probably wondering what's the difference between plastic and metal thread well look quickly in my left hand there is a plastic thread screw in my right hand a metal thread screw that's the difference coarse thread and fine thread so the two fine thread t20s are at the bottom as seen here we're going to use an impact i switched to an impact because it was a lot quicker than a hand tool but like i said it's personal preference and that's my phone going off because I forgot to mute it. So we're going to tighten this up. And now we're going to put the uh, clutch cover back on. And this is real time, unedited, 
extremely easy. We're going to make sure our little piece of heat shrink is in that groove right there or your clutch cover will not line up. And tuck our wires back behind the air breather. We're going to put the clutch cover back on. It's kind of tricky at first, but then it will just, you know, pop pop into place just like so. And we're going to put our two plastic thread screws up top. Be careful not to strip them out. And these things are incredibly easy to work on. And they're not bad pieces of equipment. The only thing I would do is replace that spark plug with an NGK or a Champion. The part number for that is a uh, BPMR6A, I believe, or a 7A, or a Champion RCJ4. Correct me if I'm wrong. So now the two metal thread screws go on the bottom, one on the top, two on the top and all, just like this. It's fairly straightforward. And just like that, it is put together. Now sliding the drive shaft in, that's next. It's not that difficult. And you don't have to torque these fasteners, just get them tight. Because you don't want to break them off, because it's just aluminum. So now we're going to slide the uh, shaft in. This is where it can get tricky to line up. And don't lose the spring that is over the uh, square uh, drive shaft piece. So you see I'm having a little bit of trouble lining it up. But once you move it around a bit, it will just slide right into place. And I believe right around here is where it slid into place. And it did. So we're going to take the nuts, or no, first we're going to thread in the bolt that goes on the bottom. That's what actually holds your drive shaft in place. Now I'm just running it in with a T20 because honestly I didn't care. I wanted to get this job done. So I'm going to hold the nut because it's recessed into the plastic on the clutch cover and I'm just going to walk it in with the T20 and, you know, tighten it up good with the uh, T25. And then this little T20 that goes above the T25 bolt, it don't even tighten up. It's just a stabilizer screw or something like that. It almost feels like it's stripped out, but it's not. So we're just going to just run it in there just a couple turns. And now we are going to, I'm going to just move the camera. I'm not going to edit none of this out because this is real time putting it back together. We're going to loosen up our T20 carb screws. We're going to hook the throttle cable up. And again, this is in real time just so you all can see how easy this repair is. Now, I generally will not repair these units because the cost to repair them versus buying a new one, they're pretty much inexpensive to replace than to repair. Now, if this was like an Echo or something like that, then yeah, repair it. So we're going to hook the throttle cable in, just snap it in like that. And we're going to lift the carburetor up. Sometimes you can just move the butterfly and get the uh, throttle cable in. But this is how I do it, and it's very easy. Just like that, everything lines up. It's pretty much straightforward. It li lines itself up. The engineers at Ryobi, when they built this, are Tektronics Industries. Really did a good job and they're really easy to work on. I don't work on many pieces of handheld equipment. My employee does, but he was off this day and I had to get this one done. So there we go. Everything is done and the repair was successful because the unit fired right up. So with that said, I hope you all learned something in this video. Consider supporting the channel by hitting that subscribe button. If you have any questions, comments, leave them in the comment section down below and I will gladly get to them whenever I have the free time because as of recording this is November 1st 2022 and I'm still a good two weeks behind on repairs. So with that said I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.